So now we give the proof of this uh, important property that generalized eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues must be linearly independent. The proof is very subtle and very delicate. Okay, it goes as follows. As usual, that's the most typical way to prove that collection of vectors is linearly independent is we take some linear combination, we have to show that all the coefficients are zero. In fact, we're going to show only that alpha one is zero. But since the order here is completely irrelevant, if we show that alpha one is zero, the same argument will work for alpha two, alpha three, etc. And the trick is the following. V1 is not necessarily an eigenvector, and we're going to use V1 to get an eigenvector. And how is it? Well, V1, if we apply T minus lambda 1 identity to V1, if we get 0, then V1 is an eigenvector. If not, then it's not 0, but then we can apply again T minus lambda 1 identity. Then maybe now it's 0. If not, apply it again. Maybe now it's 0. Suppose now it's zero. If now it is zero, but before it was not zero, it means this part here is an eigenvector. Yeah, because it's not zero, and because t minus lambda one i apply to it is zero. So that's exactly what, to, what we're going to do. We're going to take k such that t minus lambda y to the power k applied to v1 is still not zero, but as we go from k to k plus one, then just at this time, we're going to get zero. Okay, when we apply to this vector v1. So just before it was zero, let's call this vector here w. So w will be very important in our argument. So w is an eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda one. And because it's an eigenvector, for every number lambda, for every number lambda, t minus lambda i apply to w is just lambda 1 applied to w minus lambda times w. And so we can do this again and again and again. We can do this n times if we want. So t minus lambda i to the power n will be just this scalar factor to the power n applied to w. And now the second part of the trick is consider this very convenient operator here. This operator will do the job for us. What does this operator do? Well, when you apply this part here to V, to V1, we get W. And these, they want heart. However, when we apply this to V2, then this part here will make it zero. When we apply it to V3, this part here will make it zero. When you apply it to Vm, this part here will make it zero. Okay? So this very powerful operator, if we apply it, this operator to both sides of this equation, here, of course, we get still zero. And here, what do we get? Well, when j equal one, when j equal one, we get alpha one, of course. Then this applied to v1 is w. And the other ones applied to w will just be lambda 1 minus lambda 2, lambda 1 minus lambda 3, lambda 1 minus lambda m, all to the power n, apply to w. This is for j equal 1. Now what happens for j equal 2? As I said already, this part of the operator will kill the vector. For j equal 3, this part of the operator will kill the vector. So we get 0, 0, 0. All the other terms in this sum will be 0. Okay? And it will be 0 exactly by this property. But now w is not zero. w is not zero. Lambda one minus lambda m is not zero. Lambda one minus lambda three is not zero. Minus lambda two is not zero. Why are all these not zero? Because we are assuming these are distinct eigenvalues. So since w is not zero and none of these numbers before it is zero, alpha one has to be zero and this concludes the proof.